This is my all-time favorite method for implementing SVGs. In my humble opinion, it's the cleanest way with the most flexibility. You can resize the SVG, change the color, and even better, only make one HTTP request that can then be cached and used across your entire site. So without further ado, If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. This is part four of um, of a multi-part series on SVGs. If you're interested, I've included links to all the other videos in the description below, along with a link to the playlist, or it'll also be above. Okay, with this method, we are going to create an SVG sprite. And you might be wondering, what's a sprite? Huh? Sprites were really popular back when everyone was using pings for all of their images. Companies would make a single image that would have all of their icons or logos or emojis all in one place. Then you'd use this as a CSS background image and only show the part of the graphic that you wanted to display. This was helpful because your website would make one HTTP request instead of potentially hundreds. Plus, this image could be cached and then used on almost every single page of your site. An SVG sprite is similar. It has all of your SVGs baked into a single file, but it's a heck of a lot easier to work with because you don't have to worry about size and placement. There are scripts out there that will automate this process and generate the sprite for you. So you just put all your SVGs in a single folder and a tool like Webpack will look into that folder and grab any and all the SVGs in there and build this right for you. Just give it a Google. But for today, we're not gonna get that fancy. There are a few online tools that we're gonna use and most of the tools do come with a command line interface. So even if you want to run this process locally on your computer in your terminal, you can. Okay, as always, I've included links to these tools within the description below. The first tool that we're gonna look at is the SVG Sprite Generator. If you pull this up in a browser, you'll see that it says drop SVG files to create the sprite. So I have a handful of social media icons and I'm just going to drag and drop. Awesome. This section at the bottom is our SVG sprite and we can copy the content, download it, or open it directly within a code pen. I'm gonna open it within code pen. If you've never used CodePin before, it's a code sandbox that is great for experimenting with code or sharing code snippets, and you can set up a free account. Okay, so let's walk through this. On the CSS side, we don't have much. It's just an icon definition with a height, a width, and margin. On the HTML side, at the top, we have our SVG, and you'll notice that it has a height of zero and a width of zero. Interesting, interesting. Then we have these symbols, and this looks similar to what we're used to seeing. There's a view box, which corresponds with this particular icon's height and width, and each symbol has an ID related to the icon that we uploaded. So there's one for CodePen and Dribbble and Facebook and so on. Interesting. Then we have these paths with all these crazy numbers. In our display at the bottom, you'll notice that the CodePen logo is black, while all the other logos are pink. And if we can look at the code pin symbol, there's not a fill attribute defined, but there are fill attributes on all the other symbols assigned to this pink color. Interesting. If we scroll down to the bottom, there's a comment that says SVG references. Interesting. So what's going on here? Well, at the top, we have our SVG sprite, and this has all the references to all the individual SVGs. Yes, it has a width of zero and a height of zero because this isn't actually visible on the page. The content is just here so that we can reference it. Then here at the bottom, these are our SVG definitions that reference our icon CSS class. It's limiting the size and the margin so that the icons are sized and spaced consistently. And inside the SVG tag, there's a use tag that references the sprite above and tells the browser which piece to pull in. It is worth noting that the Xlink href attribute has just been updated to href. So we could update these if you like, but I'm willing to bet Xlink href will continue to be supported. And if you're interested, I'll include a link in the description below with some more information on that. 
Okay, this method will also allow us to control the color from our CSS. So let's add a fill property to our icon definition. That's strange, only our first icon that was originally black changed colors. Why do you think that is? Well, if we scroll up and look at the symbol definition, you'll notice that it doesn't have a fill attribute defined, but all the other icons have a fill attribute that override our CSS. It works like an inline style. As soon as we remove those fill attributes, everything will work just like we would have hoped. Now we could do this for every icon, but it does start to get a little tedious. So let's use a command line tool that will do the job for us. The command line tool requires a little bit of upfront setup, but it's something that you do once and then it will speed up your workflow in the long run. So the tool that we're going to use is called SVGO. I'm not exactly sure if that's SVG Go or SVGO. Anyways, the O stands for optimizer. If we load up the documentation within the browser and scroll down, you'll see there's a line to install it. Let's run this within the terminal and it doesn't really matter what folder you are when you run it because of that dash G. That's a flag that installs this globally, making it accessible anywhere. And my terminal might look a little bit different than yours since I already have this installed. Let's flip over and look at some of the documentation. This section at the top includes all the plugins that you can use in their default values. There's a lot. Let's scroll back down and you'll see a section that explains all the options that you can pass in. Then at the bottom, there are several examples and you'll see there are options for passing in files or folders. And you can also specify how you want the files to be output, whether they'll be overriding the existing files or they'll be saved elsewhere with different names. But we need to set up a configuration file so that we can remove the fill and stroke attributes for us. I put my config file in a gist on GitHub. I'll include a link in the description below. Feel free to download it, change it, use it, whatever. Okay, so I'll walk you through the process. I'm gonna click on the download zip button. Then I'm gonna put my config file into my user folder. And this is where all my user preferences are stored. You know, that's hard to believe since you don't see any files within this folder, but all those preference files start with a period. So they're hidden within the finder. If I open the terminal and type ls-a, it will list everything and you'll see a whole stream of files that start with a period. I want this SVG config file to be consistent with the other preference files. Plus I'd like to hide it. So I'm going to rename it to have a period at the front. Okay, now let's go to the folder where we have our icons. I'm gonna make this easy on myself and type CD and then drag and drop the folder onto the terminal window. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter and let's run our command. So I'm gonna say SVGO. Now I'm gonna grab all the SVG, SVGs in this folder. So I'm gonna use the asterisk and I'm not gonna include an output path. It can just overwrite what's currently there. I'm gonna to point to our config file. Make sure you use the double dashes, otherwise this won't work. So I'm gonna say config equals, then I'm gonna pass it a path to our file. So I'm gonna say users, Amy Dutton, dash SVGO, config.json, and hit enter, and it should run our script. When it's finished, it'll tell you how much it cut down on each file. Then if we open one of these, say the Facebook SVG, you won't find any fill attributes. If you have Oh My ZSH running, we can actually set up an alias to run this command. And I actually have a separate video on Oh My ZSH, link in the description and the card above. By setting up an alias, we don't have to run this command every single time. Remember, we're trying to work smarter, not harder. So I'm gonna pull up my config file and this is actually an alias that I've written to pull up my config file. So at the bottom of this file, I have all my aliases listed out. So let's create another one for SVGO. I'll say alias and we'll call this SVG me and we'll say equals and I'll just type out our command. So I'm gonna grab all SVGs, config, users, Amy Dutton, SVGO, dash config.json and give that a save. We'll probably have to restart our terminal. Now, if I type in CD, and we'll grab our SVG file and just type SVG me, 
and it will run our command. We say 0% because we have already compressed everything. Now that all of our SVG files are cleaned up, let's generate that sprite again. Except this time, instead of dragging and dropping them into a web tool, let's use another command line tool, SVG Sprite Generator. Again, I'll include a link in the description below. So if we look at the documentation to install, it says we need to run this line. So I'm gonna give that a copy and paste that into our terminal. You'll notice that dash G again means that it's installing it globally. And once this is done installing, we can run this line. We need to get a destination and an output. Within our terminal, I'm going to go up a level by typing cd dot dot, and this will make it easy to pass our entire SVG folder. So now I'm gonna say SVG sprite generate. And we want to define our directory, say SVGs, and then I want to give it an output. So I'm gonna say sprite.svg. Now we can open up our new sprite.svg file within VS Code. It's a lot cleaner than before. So let's copy this entire block and go back over to CodePen. And we just want to remove the sprite at the top. We don't wanna grab the bottom part with the use links. We just wanna grab this SVG. So I'm going to delete that and paste in our new sprite. And you should see our icons jump down and turn to that blue color. Okay, let's go to our Chrome developer tools. We could right click on one of these items and choose inspect, or we could click on this arrow and select a specific item on our page. So if we move our mouse around, it looks like there's a block on the left of our icons. And if we click on that, it will highlight the item within our HTML. If we expand this, it's a little bit easier to see that this is our sprite. Now, remember the original sprite had a width and a height of zero. Now, our cleaned up sprite doesn't have that. So let's add that back in. And you should see that space disappear. Um, okay, this is great. We can even jump down to our use link definitions here at the bottom and target our Facebook icon by adding a class of Facebook. And if we come over to our CSS, we want to say, give this a fill of purple, a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Okay, awesome. There's just one thing though, that SVG code at the top is ugly. Good news though, we can actually put that SVG sprite into an external file. And this is really great because it makes our code more readable and we don't have this nasty block of code that's technically not even visible on our page. And the external file can be cached, meaning your browser goes to one page of your site, caches it, and then it doesn't have to download that file again for any subsequent page visits. So there is one catch though. For security purposes, the file has to be on the same server. So this example won't work in CodePen, but if I spin up a local server on my computer, it works like a champ. So let me just switch over to VS Code and you can see that I have an index.html file and my SVG is inside sprite.svg. This is the generated code that we got from our command line interface. Within the use tag, I have xlink href and I have the file name and I have the pound sign and the ID for the symbol that I'm referencing. So in this case, code pen. If I switch over to my browser, you can see it's loading the code pen icon. If you're having trouble getting this to work, there is one more solution. Hang in there with me. I know this video is getting long, but I'll try to make it worth your time. You can inject the SVG code into your page using a little bit of JavaScript and Ajax. So let's flip back over to CodePen, and I'm going to click on the Assets button in the bottom left and upload our sprite.svg. Let's go back over to CodePen, and I'm going to click on the Assets button at the bottom, and I'm going to upload our sprite.svg. Okay, then I'm gonna click on the Copy As button and get the URL. Then within our HTML, we can delete all of this nastiness. And we collapsed our JavaScript panel before, but now we can open this back up. I'm going to create a new variable called Ajax and make a new XML HTTP request. And now we can use the open method. So we are going to use a get request to grab the contents of our SVG. So let's paste in that URL for our sprite. 
And then we want this to be an async request. So I'm gonna say true. Okay, and then we want it to send our data. Once it's loaded, so we'll say Ajax on load, we want to run a function. If you're wondering where these functions open, send, and on load are coming from, they're part of JavaScript. When you're working with this XML HTTP request object, you get all of those for free. So I'll include a link to the documentation in the description below. Okay, so once it's loaded, we wanna create a new div. So we can create a new variable and use create element, so we'll say document.createElement to make a div. Then we want to set the inner HTML to the response text that we get back from our Ajax request. So I'll say Ajax.response text. Then we need to insert our div at the very beginning of our HTML. Sweet, all of our icons are working again, but you'll notice that they jump down. It's the same reason as before. So we need to give it a width and a height of zero. And this time let's do it through CSS. So let's go back to our JavaScript and stick a class on our div that we can reference. Say div.className equals SVG sprite. Now we can go to our CSS panel and say SVG sprite width is zero, height is zero. Or you could make it even easier and say display none. Awesome, I know it took us a while to get to that last method, but there are several things I really love about it that make it the best. You don't have that nasty SVG code at the top of the page. With the Ajax request, it works best across all browsers and you don't have to worry about security issues. Plus, one thing you can do with Ajax, because it's literally injecting the entire SVG onto the page and not just referencing it, you can actually change the fill color for each individual path and not just the symbol. For the code pin icon, it would be better if I had a class name on the path itself, but I could also reference the first path like this. So you could say code pin path first child fill is pink. If we give that a save. There we go. Now we have a two tone icon. Phew. <laughs> Oh, that was fun, maybe. <laughs> if you're working on a React project, I would recommend checking out my ultimate icon component video, link in the card above. React has a unique way of doing things and that video explains how I apply these concepts to React. Done. So far in this series, we've covered seven different ways that you can get an SVG on a page. So if you're having trouble keeping all these methods straight, or if you'd like something for a quick reference, you're in luck. I've created a free cheat sheet that outlines each method along with the pros and cons for each. So link in the description below. All the code for this video is posted on CodePen and GitHub. Links in the description below. Feel free to download it, copy it, modify it, use it, whatever, it's yours. In the next couple of videos, we're going to get into the fun stuff and talk about no. <laughs> Manipulating SVGs, creating custom graphs, animating. So be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon to receive notifications so you don't miss out once those videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Miss Jennifer wants to get a new, like a new calendar because it's about to break. Um, oh. um. Yeah, I mean, it's a kid outside. What do you think?